so we can divide with it is that clear so as long as we have a proper line we can get distance by taking the cross product and dividing the magnitude of the line vector is that clear let's take if you want to get if you want to find a line perpendicular to a given line passing through a given point so if you have this line and some point on here and you want to find equation of this line or some representation of this line it is perpendicular to the given line and passing through the given point is that clear so let's say this line is defined by a and b so we have this line vector which is given as b minus a right we know that line vector of a perpendicular line will be perpendicular to this vector right now if you have a vector that is x comma y the perpendicular of this vector is minus y comma x so if i have two components of this line vector i can simply get the perpendicular vector easily right now if i have the line vector and i also have this point through which i want to pass my line so i can get any other point on this line simply by let's say adding this vector to this point so i have this point p1 i will get point p2 as p1 plus v where v is a perpendicular vector is this clear so i can easily find a line perpendicular to a given line passing from a point right now this will be very useful now suppose i have a line i want to find reflection of this point with respect to this line it will be on the other side of line somewhere around here right the so line joining from this point to the reflection will obviously be perpendicular to this line the given line that is so what i do is i can find this distance from this point to this line using the cross product method that i told i can also find the direction of this vector how do i do that i try to calculate a line which is perpendicular to this line passing from this point is this clear so i got this vector i got this distance so what i want is i want a point which is twice as as this distance away from this point and along this vector so the concept of a unit vector comes in here so if you want to find a vector of magnitude m which is having the direction same as a given vector so let's say given vector is v you want to find another vector v1 which has a magnitude of m and direction same as v so you can divide v by its magnitude that will give you a unit vector in the direction of v divide dividing by magnitude is very simple you can divide each component of a vector then you multiply it with m that is what what you want the result magnitude to be and you get your target vector is this clear so you can simply get this point by having this distance and this direction so you can now comfortably calculate reflection of a point with respect to a line let's say we want to find angle between a pair of lines so we have line l1 that is this from a to b we have another line l2 that is from c to d we want to find angle between these two lines now we can extend these vectors they let's say they meet somewhere here we want to find this angle theta right so as you can see even if you extend these vectors this angle won't change so what we are looking for is to find the angle between this line vector of this line and line vector of this line so you can take dot product or cross product whatever you wish and divide by the magnitudes and you get that cosine of the angle or sine of the angle and you can take sine or cos inverse and you will get the angle you can also test if two lines are parallel or not just by checking if this angle is zero or not if you want to test if three points are collinear or not 
you define a line which goes from first to second point you define another line which goes from first to third point and you see if these lines are parallel or not if they are parallel then these three points are collinear otherwise not right so this is all very easy to calculate in terms of vector algebra you don't need to put special condition when a line is vertical or horizontal you run into problems dividing by zero or you run into problems where angle is more than 90 it doesn't come in your solution so it's all handled very easily now next next important thing in this is if you want to find intersection point of two lines if this is a problem first thing you need to check if these lines are parallel or not if there are if these lines are parallel or they are concurrent then there is no definition of intersection point otherwise intersection point is unique so that you can initially check and report an error if these lines are parallel or concurrent as in as particular to your problem if they are not let's say this line is defined by point a and b this line is defined by point c and d you want to find this point so C will have a projection, uh, C will have a distance from this line, T will also have a distance from this line. So you calculate distance of both these points from the other line separately. Now you also know that this distance is changing linearly. So the rate of change of this distance on this line is constant. So if you know this distance let us say D1, if you know this distance let us say D2. So if you want to find this point where this distance is 0 and this is linearly changing, you can get it by getting C plus T minus C into this is D2. Yeah. So D1 upon This is just some formula which you can get if you try to apply linear equation. Since this is the rate of change is constant, you can see how much it changed for this distance. It went from D1 to D2. You want it to go to 0, so you can apply a corresponding vector and get this point. So this, this vector, essentially this point will give you this point, this. So here on vector C, we are we are trying to find this vector so we have this vector we multiply it with some numbers some proportion ratio if the ratio is negative it will automatically change the direction right and we will get this point ratio will be negative if this quantity is negative right so you don't need to check if this is there this point is there this point is here and all this formula will work in all cases as long as d2 and d1 are different which will be if the lines are not parallel right so this is how we get intersection point of two lines now if we, if we are trying to find intersection point of two line segments line segments is essentially bounded by their end points it is anything in between let us say one line segment is this one line segment is this then they intersect there could be another line segment here which does not intersect with these points so you want to find out if if these two line segments intersect and if they do what exactly is the point of intersection so to solve this is very simple you can treat these two line segments as lines solve and get this intersection point and then see if this point lies within these two or not to check if this point lies between these two or not is its x coordinate should be in this range and its y coordinate should also be in this range so you will check this for this segment and this point you will check check this again for the other segment so if this point is in the intersection point is within both segments then we are fine similarly a ray is essentially something which starts from a point and goes to infinity so you check if the intersection point lies on this side of the starting point or not then you will find out whether this is part of the ray or not so if you have a ray like this and a ray like this this intersection point will be ahead of these two right and we can get if this ray suppose there is another ray which started from here the intersection point will be here but it will be before the starting point 
so that doesn't count so we can take all type of combinations that is line and segment line and ray ray segment and all everything we can solve using the same method so we first we treat both of them as lines we get the intersection point then we see whether this is a valid intersection point or not that's how we solve intersection point of line segment and rays now next thing is suppose you want to find out a circle which passes through given three points the first way is to put up some sort of quadratic equations and solve which becomes very hard later on so what what you want to do is you have three points you are obviously given that these are non collinear if not given you can check so if these three points are collinear you cannot have a circle which passes through the three of them if these are not collinear a circle is something so the center is equidistant to all these three points now you know that for these two points the locus of all the points equidistant from these two is perpendicular bisector of this line right so let's say you take two points you have a line defined which goes from this to this you will get the midpoint of the line and you will find another line which goes through this midpoint and perpendicular to the given line that's how you get perpendicular bisector once you got perpendicular bisector of these two you can take another pair get their perpendicular bisector as well and find the intersection point that is the center of the circle and similarly you can get the radius just by taking distance of the center from any other point so the main concept i am trying to tell is most if not all of the geometry problems they look hard in the beginning but they can be reduced to one of these problems which you know, if you know how to solve these you can solve most of the other geometry problems so okay next problem is if you want to find out area of a polygon so you have some polygon defined and wait draw it properly it could be convex or concave something like this and you want to find out the area of this polygon so to calculate area of this polygon there is a very simple formula which you guys just can just remember that is so if you have a region somewhere you keep taking cross products of the adjacent numbers adjacent points you add that up and divide it by 2 and you get the area so i'll write the pseudo code of this suppose this polygon is stored in some sort of array so you'll take that array p and the length of this array is n that is the formula to get area of a polygon is this clear note that you did for this pair you did this and all finally you also have to do it from last point to first point to complete a circle for that when you are taking the nth point you, you want to take p0 with it while finding cross product so when you are taking the last point you want to take the first point and find that cross product so you can simply put i plus 1 modulo n and it will circle is this clear also note that this whole thing can come out to be negative you shouldn't worry about that you can simply take absolute of this area at the end and return that this only works if the polygon is not self intersecting so if you have something like it goes for these type of polygons it won't work but please don't agar much in the programming context problems at least the next problem which i'll explain is if you want to find out intersection points of a pair of circles so you have a circle center is c1 radius is r1 you have another circle center is c2 radius is r2 you want to find these two intersection points 